Did you know that if we put all of the waste generated every year in garbage trucks, you could line them up 25 times around the earth? Yeah, I did the math. Want to find out how? So our world currently produces 2 billion metric tons of waste every year, according to the World Bank, which has the most reliable numbers in this regard. And your average garbage truck is 10 meters long and can hold 20 metric tons of waste, according to average estimates in most countries. So we would need 2 billion divided by 20, that is 100 million trucks to hold all of this waste. And 100 million trucks in line will cover a distance of 1 billion meters or 1 million kilometers. Now one round around the earth roughly equals 40,000 kilometers. So the truck can cover the earth 1 million kilometers divided by 40,000 kilometers, that is 25 times, at least. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. Everyone generates waste, but not everyone thinks about it. Each and every action of ours and everyone else on this planet leaves some trace behind. And in our day-to-day -day lexicon, we call these traces waste. Waste is a daily byproduct of our lives and it impacts everything around us. From our health to that of other beings and from that of the environment to that of the economy. If we were to be more mindful about the waste and the traces we leave, our planet would be much healthier and our lives much better. So what can we do about all of this waste? Well, we must manage it. But how? Well, the first and golden rule is to always try and reduce, reuse and or recycle your waste and preferably in that order. So you should always first try to prevent or minimize the generation of waste in the first place. And then if the waste can be reused or recycled, that must be done. Most importantly, reuse and recycling must be incentivized for everyone. But with the staggering amounts of waste that are produced on a daily basis, not all waste can be reduced, reused and or recycled. What about other kinds of waste? Well, we can then try to either recover what we can or dispose of it. But to make sure we do this in an environmentally sound manner. The latter part is where most recovery and disposal options miss out on thereby creating more problems than they solve. This order of options, reduce, reuse, recycle, recover, and or dispose, is also known as the waste hierarchy, and it forms the cornerstone of waste management, which itself refers to all of the activities that deal with waste from its inception to its final stage. This includes the collection, transportation, treatment, and disposal of waste, but also the monitoring, regulation and enforcement of waste policies. I know, all of this sounds very tedious and boring, and it can be. But do you know that the improper management of waste is increasing pollution, causing diseases, contaminating land and water, and adversely impacting human and economic development across the planet? Improper management of waste is also one of the leading causes of greenhouse gas emissions leading to catastrophic climate change across the world. But the good news is that even basic system improvements can reduce these emissions significantly. And thus managing these ever-increasing qualities of waste is critical for a sustainable future for everyone. I work with Black Forest Solutions in Berlin, a specialized environmental service provider that is committed to improving waste management strategies globally. We work with the public, private and non-profit sector to figure out what waste solutions work best where and also implement them in economically and environmentally sound ways. And if there's one thing we have learned, it's that there is no one-size-fits-all solution to our waste force. In fact, in our increasingly complex interdependent world, where waste is often hyper-localized, the best solutions are the ones that are tailor-made for and adapted to local and regional contexts. Having said that, there are two approaches that are really turning the waste waves in the 21st century. First, circular economy. It basically refers to a system that is aimed at eliminating waste by continuously repurposing it. Also known as a waste to wealth approach, it encourages society to see waste items not as worthless, but rather as useful raw materials for other products. In this approach, all waste should become source for another product either as a byproduct or recovered resource for another industrial process like plastic waste into roads. Yes, that's happening. Or as a regenerative resource for nature like food waste into compost. We all know about that. 
This regenerative approach is in stark contrast to our traditional linear economy which has a take, make, dispose model of production and has unleashed untold levels of harm on our environment. The world's population is growing and with it the demand for raw materials. However, the supply of crucial raw materials is limited. Therefore, the only way to a sustainable way to a sustainable future is through a circular economy approach across the board. Circular economy is already on the agenda of many countries and it has delivered many benefits to everyone such as reducing pressure on the environment, improving the supply security of raw materials, increasing competitiveness, stimulating innovation, boosting economic growth, creating jobs, 550,000 jobs in the European Union alone and more on their way. Second concept is the extended producer's responsibility. Based on the polluters pay principle, which entails that those who produce pollution should bear the costs of managing it to prevent damage to human health or the environment, EPR requires making manufacturers responsible for the entire life cycle of the products that they manufacture. This also helps shift the burden from municipalities and taxpayers to the producers and consumers, thus making it more fair. Introduced in 1990 by a Swedish professor, EPR had two goals. The first was to address the growing problem of excessive waste. And the second was to stimulate environmentally conscious product design. EPR helps reduce waste management costs, provide jobs, as well as save resources and enhance product reusability and recyclability, contributing to a much more sustainable way of life. For producers, it improves their environmental credentials, creates a competitive advantage and strengthens customer loyalty. It has already been introduced by most developed economies around the world and is also on its way in most emerging economies as well. Now, combining these two approaches, circular economy on one hand and extended producer responsibility on the other. Let's imagine a scenario. Imagine if the goods of today became the resources of tomorrow. Instead of the throw away and replace culture that we are used to, we adopt a return and renew culture, where products and components are designed to be disassembled and regenerated. A culture where we learn from the regenerative cycle of nature. A culture where we never own any product or technology, and rather than buying, we license them from producers. And once they reach their end of life, the producers take them back for them to be reused, recycled and or repurposed. What if we could design all products to come back to their makers, their technical materials being reused and their biological parts increasing agricultural value? And all of this done and transported through renewable energy. Sounds great, right? So here we do have a model that builds prosperity in the long term and achieves true sustainability for each and every person on this planet, all the while making commercial profit, which is what most producers, governments and industries are worried about in the first place. The good news is that there are many companies and governments realizing this and moving in this direction. The bad news is that they are nearly not enough. And what's worse is that we are running out of time. Yes, we are. Now you must be wondering what you as an individual can do. Here is the part where many would expect me to list down an all too familiar list of things and actions that an individual can take by managing your waste better, by recycling more, by turning off the electricity, by carpooling, cutting down on emissions on an individual level and the list goes on, etc, etc, etc. But I won't. Because honestly, by now we all know what individuals must do. And if not, there are hundreds of guidelines out there in every shape, way and form encouraging and advising individuals what they can do to help save the planet. But what I want to tell you is that it is not enough. It is not enough. Please don't get me wrong. Individual actions are critical. And you must keep doing what you can, especially when it comes to your own consumption. But if we need real change, if we need transformative change, we require our systems to change. Allow me to illustrate my point by looking at the ongoing and raging coronavirus pandemic that has wreaked havoc across the world. 
with much of the world in lockdown since the past few months we have never had a clear example of how changes to individual behavior on the mass scale can make a difference if any and as drastically as our lives have been circumscribed in the recent months new data actually shows that this would actually not be enough to save us from the catastrophic consequences of climate change even if it was somehow sustainable for example it is estimated that the pandemic could wind up cutting up to maximum 8% of global emissions the largest annual fall to ever be recorded but even with such dramatic changes to the ways we conduct our lives an 8% reduction feels like a poor payoff and it is climate scientists agree across the world they do they say that we need a 20% reduction annually if we have to have any hope of avoiding the worst of the climate crisis this means every month for the whole world we have to li live like we did in april during the lockdown is that possible i don't think so nobody thinks so experts also say that this comparatively mild and temporary reduction shows how desperately we need comprehensive environmental policy and systemic change across the board to reduce emissions and our traces in a truly systemic way and for that we need to turn to the big hitters the governments and industries who are disproportionately responsible for a majority of the emissions traces and waste generated in the first place again this is not to say that individual actions do not have a role to play they do and they matter and they have some personal sacrifices will definitely need to be made by all of us but it's hard to make a lot of planet friendly in by individual choices for example switching to alternatives to plastic packaging when the system to do so has not been put into place speaking of plastic packaging do you know that it has gone through the roof as a result of the corona virus pandemic and all of them made from virgin plastic that is new plastic instead of recycled plastic why because to be financially competitive in the marketplace it is extremely advantageous to package your goods in newly made cheap virgin plastic so as the economic crisis is making the average consumer more price sensitive affordable goods are taking precedence over environmentally friendly ones since grocery items that come only in plastic are universally less expensive those items are the go for many and while personal protective equipment like masks and gloves have been the saving grace for all of us it's also contributing to the growing heaps of plastic waste globally much of this kind of plastic is not recyclable and is polluting our oceans i'm sure you've seen a documentary or two about this and like other traces this waste is disproportionately being generated by a handful of actors and so 2020 is on pace to see 30% more waste than 2019 and it's not like there is no way around this problem there is a tax on virgin plastic a take back system and sustainable product design are all possible but unfortunately industries have lo long lobbied against it and governments have told the line because they are not profitable enough but at some point we will have to start putting environment ahead of the economy and human lives ahead of profit The EU, however, in light of the recent coronavirus pandemic and its unintended consequences, did introduce a tax on virgin plastics at 80 cents a kilo, effective from the 1st January 2021, showing us all that when needed, governments can indeed unite and take action. Even though experts believe that this is too little and too late, it is a start. But more countries and industries need to follow suit and move towards a holistic circular economy where manufacturers are responsible for the polluting products that they generate. If our sustainable actions need to make their intended impact and save the planet, we need a system that incentivizes and rewards sustainable actions and punishes lack thereof, not only for individuals but also for governments and industries. as with efforts to control and respond to a pandemic strong leadership regulation and preparedness can make a much bigger difference than individual habits in managing our waste and cutting emissions and they can also prevent draconian measures of last resort like limiting our movements and restricting the economy the lowered emissions projections for 2020 are based on weakened economic growth suppressing that growth instead of transitioning to a vibrant green economy would only prolong our troubles yet investing in green initiatives like circular economy approaches could promote growth while keeping emissions low wouldn't that be wonderful we have the solutions we have the tools
we just need institutional will to move faster towards it so if you really know what if you really want to know what you can do i would ask you to start holding not only yourself but also your leaders political and business accountable for the traces we leave